What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Johnny, back here with another video. And today, I'm going to be doing my in-depth review of the latest Elvis Presley release that came out a little bit over a month ago, Elvis Back in Nashville. So today, I'm going to do my in-depth review. I'm going to talk about the packaging, the music, and everything I usually do with this. So let's just get started. All right. So this came out November 12th on a four-CD box set containing songs um, that made up the albums Elvis Now, he Touched Me, which was a gospel album. Elvis Sings the Wonderful World of Christmas, of course, which was a holiday album. And Elvis the Fool album, which really was just called Elvis, but nicknamed The Fool from fans. So this is everything he recorded in 1971 in this box set. And then the third and fourth disc are selections of outtakes that you've got. So we're going to talk about all that in depth. But we also got these, of course. Um, as usual, what we usually get is the vinyl sets. Two LPs, basically a little uh, highlight of the box set. The selection of outtakes. This is a regular standard black vinyl. And if we were able to get it before it sold out, they also had a colored vinyl for Graceland Exclusive on Graceland.com, which was a sea blue vinyl, okay? So if you were able to get this before it sold out, cool. I didn't open mine, though. Other channels opened theirs, and they showed theirs. It looks really cool. Excuse me. All right. So let's just get started with the, excuse me, <laughs> the review of this. All right. So let's talk about the packaging first. The packaging is pretty predictable of RCA Sony Legacy. The usual imagery we get, this eight, maybe eight by eight box, um, box set. Now, this is a major complaint I have with every box that they do. I wish they would stop doing these type of things that hold the CDs, this little trifold thing, and these paper sleeves, because they really do tend to scuff up the disc and scratch them up. I wish they would just have a regular disc, plastic, at least a plastic disc inlay up for these things so they don't scratch them up. So hopefully one day they'll go back to that. I don't know, maybe it's cheaper to make it this way, but yeah. So, you know, usual imagery looks like, you know, session boxes. And same with the book. The book I always find very interesting. I love reading these because usually it talks about um, it'll talk about basically the whole year of 1971 in this case, and it talks about the sessions and what went on during the sessions, what was going on in Elvis's life, and how the sessions transpired, and all these different things. It gives a lot of good information. Now, the one piece of information I found very interesting in here, which I did not know, and I actually wondered about it was in 19 when he was doing these sessions he wasn't feeling good one night so i think I, he must have went back to his hotel because he was recording in nashville obviously um was that during these sessions when elvis went home to use the studio time they actually end up recording james burton's album he did for a m records but i think it was just called james burton his basically i think his debut album that came out in 1971 so that was very interesting because you can't find the credits for that album for james burton's album who played on it so basically if you can find the credits to those sessions whatever session date that was it states in here those are the musicians that played on that album so i thought that was very interesting very interesting but yeah so of course these books are always a good read to me and gives good information so yeah that's what i thought about that so really cool all right, so this is moving pretty quick. So now let's talk about the music, the big thing that's in here. Now lately, now this was mixed by Matt Ross Spang, who's been past, he's been doing a few box sets, a few releases lately here lately for Elvis, and he's been doing a great job. And I gotta say, these sound amazing. Um, everything's balanced great. I really don't have no complaints about that. It's really good. And the mastering is by Vic Insini, who's been doing Elvis releases for years now. Um, good combination. Matt Ross Bang, he does a really good job mixing these. And they, they, the balance sounds great. Everything sounds good and beautiful and smooth um, and crisp. I, I think it's he does a good job. You know, can't really complain about the way these sound. But we're going to go more in depth about the music, about the undubbed stuff. I went like this. So you're gonna, you guys are going to find out in a few minutes why I went like this. So stay tuned. Okay. So like I said, this covers everything. Obviously, this covers everything in Nashville that Elvis recorded in 1971. And this was the last time that Elvis recorded in Nashville in his lifetime. 
So, and so Elvis's voice for me for these songs, this is for me in my opinion. Not that Elvis's voice didn't sound terrible, but Elvis started getting that little quiver in his voice, and his voice was, of course wasn't as strong as 1970. But I still enjoy these songs. There's there's songs in here that really show his voice. The ones that really stand out for me is um, "We Can Make the Morning." Um, Amazing Grace is always good that I really enjoyed. Those are the those are the main ones that really stick out of my mind like that. And what's the other one? Reach Out to Jesus is good. I really do like his his voice on that too. It's it's really great. And Elvis's voice on Oh Come All You Faithful. Yeah. That's the other one. I love that his version of Come. It's one of my favorite versions of Oh Come All Ye Faithful. But like I said, Elvis's voice. This isn't really my favorite era of Elvis. This is when his voice for me wasn't as strong. And he had a low quiver in his voice. But it's okay. Still enjoy this box set. Alright, so now this is a part where my review is going to go a little eh. Okay. So about this release. This release is not true to the concept of the last release which was elvis in nashville this is supposed to be the undubbed sessions of elvis which it is but it isn't basically the concept is supposed to be is whatever was whoever was there live in the studio is what you're supposed to hear in this box set but with this box set this edition of this concept this is not the case so let me explain all right, so when they were promoting this, I remember they were just like with the first, with the one that came out last year, Elvis and Memphis, Elvis and Nashville. They they said, "Oh, this is the undubbed massive," which are, those really truly were, but these are not. Because on these recording sessions, there was backup singers available uh, present on these sessions. Well, the whole time they were promoting this, it made it sound like it wasn't. They, they, or it was just undubbed. They didn't go in depth of what they said. Until when I did a seal to reveal, a lot of my subscribers of mine been putting in the comments, these aren't the true sessions. You can hear the backup singer stripped away in the background, but they're bleeding through Elvis's microphone. And I was like, you know, I thought something sounded amiss, to be honest to you, when I was listening to this. So I went back and listened to this box set with headphones. And these aren't the true Undub Masters, which I should have known already because I own all the FTDs. And if you listen to the outtakes, there were backup singers available or around on these sessions. So this doesn't really follow the concept. And then I went back and looked into this book. And on the end of the reading of this book, right here where it says, Producer Notes. This is what it says. Elvis back in Nashville is constructed for the most part on the same criteria as his predecessor from Elvis in Nashville, Sony Legacy 2021, which is, of course, was 2020. So they made a mistake in this book. Um, the main principle is to showcase Elvis Presley and his core band as they sounded during the actual sessions without orchestra overdubs and vocal accompaniment. However, a key differential from the ninth, from the 70s dates is that many of the recordings in 1971 included backup singers. Elvis Back in Nashville, therefore, offers a variety of song performances, both with and without vocal accompaniment. So, yeah, then it says, Note, as the vocal interaction between Elvis and the backing singers is deemed fundamental to the gospel performances, they have been left as originally intended by Elvis and a and r man, Felton Jarvis. Okay, so that basically tells you that, yeah, it's not the true undubbed masters. They took away the backup singers to showcase Elvis's voice. And I'll be honest with you, on some of these songs, like I said, his voice sounded good. And on actually on some of them, his voice didn't sound as good. Like a perfect example for me is the first Noel. I understand why they had overdubs and backup singers there. Because many of these songs, especially on the first disc, like for example, I remember on Early Morning Rain, of course there was people available, there was backup singers around during that session. You can hear, of course, 
Matt Rockspain, he, he tripped, he stripped them away, the vocal accompaniment. But the way Elvis recorded, he always recorded with, uh, you know, a handheld microphone, not one that was hanging in front of his face. So, even though they stripped away the backing vocals, their vocals bleeded through his microphone. You can hear them very faintly in the background. So, this isn't, so really, in a nutshell, people, this isn't the true Undub Masters. So, that just honestly and truly, it really put a damper on this release for me. I still like it. I'm not saying I don't enjoy it. I still do enjoy it to a degree, but it doesn't follow the original concept. But actually, on here, they did. Now, there's, there's one that was true on sec, on the third disc. They put We Can Make the Morning Master with backing vocals. And over here on disc one, We Can Make the Morning, it has it without the backing vocals because they're obviously in that song. And, and again, you can hear them faintly in the background. Okay? So, so I mean, they're not the true undub masters. So since they're not, it might as well be something like this. Because this wasn't the true undub masters, just to let you guys know, too. Very few of them were truly undubbed. But this is Our Memories of Elvis. This is the FTD. Contains volume one and two. And parts and unreleased version. And unreleased part three of that series. And this goes for this too. You know, they stripped down. For example, way down. There was obviously people around during the Jungle Room sessions. Backing vocalists. And they stripped them, they stripped them away. But on way down... You can hear them stripped away, and you can hear them bleeding very faintly in the background of Elvis's microphone. So, yeah. And as far as unreleased stuff, there's very few unreleased things in this box set. So if you really want them, you got to get it in this box set. They actually aren't available anywhere else. And But it's nothing really to write home for. It's really basically the false start. It's basically the bottom of the barrel. Because, you know, RCA's been releasing stuff of Elvis for years. So they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel now. Um, the one thing that's, I guess, the most interesting is a fragment of a little improv performance of Are You Lonesome Tonight, which is only 15 seconds. So other than that, it's really just false starts, for the most part, that are available, that are previously unreleased, and are on here for the very first time. So, whew, that was a lot to say, man, i tell you what. So... My final verdict, is this worth getting and am I happy having it? If you're a big Elvis fan like me, you're going to get it anyways. Um, if you're that fan, I I'm happy. I'm happy, but I'm not happy. I I'm disappointed. I was excited about this initially when, this, when I heard it was coming out because it was the same concept as back in Nashville or, or in Nashville, Elvis in Nashville. But it turned out it's not, you know. So that was a big damper for me, and it really, I'm not going to lie, pissed me off. So, I mean, what do we got to do to get the, the real undubbed sessions of this of this material in this box set? Are we going to have to wait for a sessions box set from FTD? So we can spend out like, I don't know, 75 bucks on a CD set that has the true undubbed masters with, without the backing vocals taking out. I don't know. I guess we'll see in the future. But I'm, I am still happy that I got it, because it's an Elvis release, and I always enjoy Elvis releases. And it still is enjoyable if you take away that factor of it not being true to the concept. I still enjoy that they still sound great. Um, it's a new release. It's great. Um, I'm just That's just a big thing that really bothered me. I'm going to stop there, because I don't want to be repetitive. <laughs> so, that's my review of this. Um, I hope you all... I hope maybe if you didn't get this yet, I helped you make a decision if you want to get it or not. Um, I think this is a little, it's just under $40, this release. So it's not super expensive. And the vinyl is about $24. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Are you, do you going to get it? Have you got it already? Do you enjoy it? Were you disappointed like me? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate everybody watching and people who telling me that, this wasn't a true undub session, so I had to go back and listen to it. So I do appreciate all the comments with that. So until next time, people, I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully I'll try to come back to you guys soon, maybe with some type of Prince video. So I will see you all in the next video. And if I don't see you guys until then, hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. So see you later and goodbye.